What's the best way to build a house? For years, the answer has been to send an endless stream of people to a build site for basically a full year. But now, home construction is moving into factories and the whole process is about to get a whole lot more efficient. Prefabricated housing is nothing new though, and it's actually falling in popularity. In 1958, 10% of new homes were prefabs, but that number has shrunk to just 2% today. Looking at the data, you would be crazy to think that investing in a prefab home builder would be a good idea. But there's something weird going on here. Three of Elon Musk's early investors, Gigafund, Valor Equity Partners, and Founders Fund, just poured $60 million into a prefab home builder by the name of Cover. So what did they know about prefab home building that the rest of us don't? All three of those firms worked with Elon on SpaceX. So it seems like something structural must be changing in the home building market to finally unlock some disruptive opportunities. In order to get to the bottom of this, I called up Alexis Rivas, the founder and CEO of Cover, and arranged to meet him in Silver Lake to sit down for a chat. As we talked, I realized that his entire strategy for disrupting the home building industry can be summed up in three broadly applicable ideas. Let's start with what his company does. I'm Alexis, and I started Cover to fix home building. Cover is redesigning the entire home building process from the ground up. We design, we engineer, we permit, we manufacture, and we install homes. Even though Cover takes a full stack approach, the product they sell is pretty straightforward. It's a small but well-designed building that fits right in your backyard. Although you could live in a Cover unit full time, they're most often used as guest houses, studio spaces, or rental units. And funnily enough, Alexis actually lives in a unit that his company recently built, which just goes to show you how much he stands by his product. But you're probably thinking to yourself, backyard homes are such a niche product. How is this gonna revolutionize housing? That's a good question, and there are a few good answers. First, it's always a good plan to start small when you're building a new startup. Before SpaceX could build Starship, they had to build the Falcon 1. And before Tesla could ship the Model 3, they had to build the Roadster. By focusing on smaller backyard homes, Alexis and his team have been able to tune their production lines for maximum efficiency. And this is one of the key reasons why Alexis has been so successful with Cover. He has a huge vision, but he started small. There's another reason why this initial strategy is working so well for Cover though. They operate in California, and California has a unique set of regulations that make it incredibly easy to build these types of structures. Uh, but there are California state laws that were passed that allow you to build a backyard home on any property. If you have a, a you know a single family home in California, you can build at least an 800 square foot backyard home if you have the, the physical space. As long as you have the physical space, you're allowed to build that. Some of the biggest startups of the past decade have been built by taking advantage of new regulations and underutilized assets. Airbnb obviously helps homeowners get more value out of the square footage that they already have, and Cover just helps homeowners add more square footage. And this isn't even an unregulated gray area like the ride-sharing market was 10 years ago. The state of California wants to encourage more building and pass new laws to make it happen. California, and particularly Los Angeles, has been in a massive housing crisis for years now. In 1960, Los Angeles was zoned to hold up to 10 million residents, but by 1990, the city had capacity for just under 4 million people. High rents, congested roads, and homelessness can all be traced back in some part to the difficulty of building new housing. But fortunately, that's changing. Now, obviously cover isn't gonna solve everything overnight, but their approach is worth paying attention to because it's incredibly scalable. All these other products, you know, cars, furniture, like, you know, our computers, they're all made in factory. And because they're made in a the factory, they're, you know, abundantly available, low cost, high quality. And that's where I said, oh, like, why aren't homes built that way? So, so I actually went and worked for a prefab home company thinking that they had the solution to the problem. And what I learned was that, yes, they were building homes in a factory, but they had basically just taken the conventional construction process and moved that exact same process into the factory. In order to understand what Cover is doing and how it's different from typical prefab home building, we need to talk about the different types of prefabs. First is what they call manufactured homes. And this is what Alexis was talking about. The house is built using completely conventional techniques, and then it's just shipped to a plot of land and dropped down on a foundation. This has a number of problems though. 
mainly actually shipping the massive home once it's built. Delivery requires a massive flatbed truck that can only drive on designated roads. Most residential streets in Los Angeles are far too narrow and windy for this to be an option. Additionally, the main benefit of this construction technique is that there are no weather delays while you're building, since everyone is working in a big warehouse. But LA only gets a few days of rain per year. The second type of prefab home is actually just a mobile home, but there are a number of problems with this approach as well. Because mobile homes are technically vehicles, they have to adhere to motor vehicle regulations, which adds an additional layer of complexity. Even though some mobile homes are incredibly well built, they just can't deliver a high level of quality that matches most freestanding homes. Alexis passed on both of those strategies before settling on Cover's ultimate solution. It's called panelized housing, and if I'm being honest, it's basically just like Legos. Individual panels are built in the Cover factory and then easily assembled at the build site. This approach solves all of the aforementioned problems. Since Cover is just shipping panels to the build site, they don't need to worry about narrow streets. Honestly, it's incredible that they were able to build this unit where they did. Just flying my drone around to film the place was hard enough. It would clearly be impossible to deliver a fully constructed house. Panels are really the only viable option. And because Cover is focused on building these modular panels, they can sink tons of time and resources into designing the perfect panel which will then be used on all future projects. They can also organize their entire factory to produce these panels at scale with precision and efficiency, which lowers the cost. Customers can still choose different layouts for their particular unit, but the vast majority of the work has already been optimized before the project even starts. At a high level, there's just kind of two key parts, right? So we're building homes more like how cars are made, right, on a production line. Um, but unlike cars, every property is unique People have very different ways of living, right? Some people want two bedrooms and, a, and an office. Uh, and so customization plays a much bigger role in home building than in most mass produced products. Most of the other companies that were trying to solve this problem, they basically had a model approach where they had, you know, like 10 layouts and you had to pick one. Um, whereas we said, no, we're going to actually develop the ability to do custom in a way that scales. And so there's the production line part of it, but there's also the software part of it. And that software part of it enables the customization at scale. All this has let Cover cut their build time dramatically, especially when compared to traditional building methods. This structure was built in 33 days. 18 months ago, we were building these in 120 days. Right, so we took our install time down from 120 days to 30 days. But build time actually isn't the most compelling thing about cover though. It's the pricing transparency. It's pretty much common knowledge that anytime you try to build anything, there are going to be cost overruns. Whether you're building something from scratch or just remodeling, most contractors will underquote you in order to win the job and then slowly let the cost creep up throughout the project. When you're halfway through, you're unlikely to stop just because the cost went up. But the fear of cost overruns runs stops a lot of people from even trying to build in the first place. And this is the biggest pain point that Cover alleviates for customers. They take all the guesswork out of budgeting. Once customers fill out a simple form on the Cover website, data about the property is automatically analyzed to determine what can be built. If things look good, the Cover team then starts to work with the customer to figure out exactly what they want. And even though the Cover units are highly customizable, the prices they quote are solid. When we show you your custom designs, right, we actually actually know exactly how those those are going to be built down to the bolt right and that's because we have software that does you know full 3d models and we we, we know exactly how that does it how much each part costs. And so we can give you a guaranteed upfront price, right? Kind of like buying clothes or furniture, you know, you just know what it's gonna cost. This cuts to the core of why cover is so interesting to me. It's super common for people to think that they should absolutely maximize around a single feature of their business, like creating the most customizable house possible, or conversely, creating the most standardized house possible. In reality, the best strategy is often somewhere in the middle. Alexis focuses on delivering just enough customizability to keep customers happy while standardizing everything that no one cares about like how pipes and wires are laid out inside of the walls. Shipping container homes are the worst offender when it comes to this over-standardization mentality, but they still get a ton of attention. So we need to talk about why they are so flawed. On paper, it sounds great. 
Instead of building the external structure from scratch, you can just buy a used shipping container and start making modifications. In practice though, shipping container homes come with a ton of terrible drawbacks and in some cases can even be dangerous. The first reason shipping containers don't make good homes is the size. A standard container is eight feet wide, eight and a half feet tall, and 20 feet long. Now, standard ceiling heights are nine feet, so losing six inches might not sound that bad, but you can't just move into a shipping container and call it a day. You need to add flooring and insulation, which reduces the space significantly. You also need to cut holes in the container for windows and ventilation. This reduces the structural integrity though. So then you need to add more framing and pretty soon you're building an entire house inside of your shipping container just to create a structurally sound living space. And don't forget about insulation. Metal is a terrible insulator. So without proper insulation, you'll be freezing in the winter and boiling in the summer. All of that is manageable, even though it adds some cost. But the real problem comes from what happens in the shipping container before it gets converted into a home. See, while you can usually figure out what ports a shipping container has visited, it's a lot harder to figure out what was inside the container. Companies usually keep that information private in order to safeguard their operations. You don't want pirates finding out how valuable a particular shipment is after all. But the problem is that a lot of shipping containers are used to transport toxic chemicals like pesticides, and these can leak while on the high seas. The risk of exposure to toxic chemicals left in shipping containers is such an issue that the state of California actually made it illegal to build houses using shipping containers that had been used more than once. Now, you can guarantee that your container is 100% safe by just buying a new one that's never been used before. And that is what a lot of people wind up doing. But at that point, you're basically just using a shipping container for the aesthetics. And that matches up with what people say. Just listen to this quote of someone who built a shipping container home. And why did you choose to build your home out of shipping containers? Um, I really like the industrial look. It's totally fine to like a particular style and go out of your way to build a custom house that fits your taste. But wait until you hear the price of this place. The house itself is up around 450000 To be clear, Cover is not building a cheap product. Their smallest unit starts at $93,000, and larger units can be over $300,000. But Alexis openly admits that he's trying to build the Tesla Roadster of housing right now. It's going to be a premium product, but it will inform future designs that will eventually be dramatically more affordable. That's exactly why we started off really focused on backyard homes. It was in order to have a shorter iteration cycle, learn more with smaller structures, and iterate quickly. Right, so we're constantly rolling in improvements to every single one that we build. And the way we kind of balance that short term with long term mindset is the improvements that we're rolling in are the types of improvements and, and, and learnings that we can apply, not just to backyard homes. Right, so we're focusing on like the long term technology while doing it in like a form factor that makes sense for the short term. And here's our second key takeaway. Don't chase trends. Alexis has been working on cover for years now. And he might have been able to build some hype around shipping containers because most people still think that they are a good idea. But that would have been a dead end. Cover would never be able to adapt any of their learnings from building shipping container homes into larger projects because the fundamental premise is so flawed. There's one more reason why this project in particular has attracted so much attention, and it comes back to that idea of iteration. At this point, nearly everyone has read Elon Musk's original secret plan blog post where he outlined Tesla's long-term plan. They would build a high-end sports car to fund the development of a sporty four-door family car, which in turn would fund an even cheaper third model. That post was written in 2006, a full decade before the rollout of the Model 3, and it laid the foundation for a new wave of startups tackling big problems. And Alexis is clearly taking a page out of Elon's book for Cover's long-term plan. So it's, it's, it's kind of going from a small backyard home, high end, then developing slightly lower cost, entire you know, single family homes with multi-story capabilities. And then from there, going to uh, multi-family and, and continuously lowering the cost by investing in tooling and engineering. This is why those investors who backed Elon Musk more than a decade ago are now backing Alexis. He's planning for the very long term. Every day the cover spends improving upon the design and engineering of their core panel will directly impact their ability to deliver affordable housing in the future. And eventually, they could even be building full apartment complexes. So the crazy thing is that, is, is that it's really just panels and we're engineering those panels. Yeah. So going from a backyard home to a home and then to a building, it's just 
going from you know 50 to 100 to 10,000 panels. I had one more key takeaway from my conversation with Alexis though, and it's about the value of just rolling up your sleeves and getting started. Alexis does have a degree in architecture, and he'd even worked in the industry before he founded Cover. But the experience that taught him more than anything about building was during his prototyping phase. The first prototype, we, st we still actually have it in our parking lot, um, but it was this small 110 square foot, basically office, right? So it's just, it's just a room, it has three windows. We learned more building that one structure than we did like our entire architecture like school. That's a really important lesson. Hands-on experience is incredibly important in entrepreneurship. So get out there and go build something. And if you want to help cover build the future of housing, they're hiring. This video isn't even sponsored. I just like Alexis and it sounds like a fun place to work. After all, it's basically just playing with Legos.